Welcome back to another edition of the Pagcast. I'm your host, Michael Pagani, joined alongside, this time in person actually, uh, Carlton Ravens defenseman Andrew Jarvis. Andrew, welcome to the Pagcast. Thank you again for coming on. Thank you for having me. I'm pumped. I'm glad you're back in person. Yeah, you know, it's been a long road to being in person again. Uh, first time, this is my first interview in person thing since I think like November of 2019. Uh, you know, I really, uh, you know, the story behind that is I was interviewing, uh, you know, Savannah Gray. She was part of our high school field hockey team and uh, they were just about to go to OFSA. And so I just brought her on because I was doing high school athletes at the time. And little did I know I'd be, you know, blowing this up and interviewing sports journalists from James Duffy to, you know, everyone that you see. Uh, I've really been surprised with all the support that I've gotten. And I want to thank you again for taking the time out of your day. to Come on. Yeah, so you're getting that for good reason. So, you know, how have you been keeping busy during this extended off season? Uh, we've had uh, countless amounts of uh, HPC messages from Nick Westcott, our team trainer. So he keeps us in the loop with all of our workouts. Uh, our coaches have done a really good job keeping us on the ice when we can. Even when we had limited numbers on the ice, like last year, when we could only have like eight or ten on the ice, uh, the guys would show up and we were able to stay on track that way. So we've been pretty lucky in that, uh, in that sense. Who influenced you to start playing hockey? Well, I just grew up in a hockey family. Uh, my dad played, all my brothers played junior in Mooresburg. Um, and just from a young age, like my whole street, we'd all just play street hockey all the time. And that's just, I just grew up with hockey in my blood and that's- Just yeah. huge street hockey parties. Oh, yeah. That, that's the best, honestly. I, you know, uh, I remember growing up, uh, so my mom and dad are uh, divorced. And so when I was at my mom's house, uh, there'd be like the, like we had uh, people across the street and they had like, you know, a couple kids uh, who loved hockey. So I just joined them and we had a nice little street hockey game. So I'm pretty sure you could relate to that on Absolutely. some aspect as well. Absolutely. Throw the young guys in that. I was always getting thrown in between the pipes. <laughs> <laughs> Balls peppered at me. That is tough. Well, see, that must be one of the reasons why you chose not to be a goalie. Correct. That's and correct. Uh, obviously goalies are just a complete different animal. Well, they're, yeah, they have, they're wired up different for sure, but they're fun to have around. You need them. Being 5'9", or you know, being a small size, how do you make sure you make the most of it? Um, I think a lot of it is body position, and a lot of it is just fear. Like you can't, as a small guy, you, unless you're unbelievably skilled, which I'm not, like you gotta, you gotta be tough enough to go into corners into battles, and you're gonna take bumps and bruises, but you gotta be able to give them too. And if you can just play smart positionally, it's it, it makes a big difference that way. Like kind of getting under the skin of the opponent, in a sense. Absolutely, it's much easier for a smaller guy to get under the skin of another opponent. Do you have any players that you model your game after? Uh, growing up, I really liked Francis Bullion on the Habs. Mike Weaver was another really good one that I loved watching. Just those small guys, just integral parts of teams. You know, they do little things, blocking shots, just clean breakouts and awesome. They're just little stuff that really do help the team that nobody really thinks about. So kind of like, almost like if we're, yeah, because you're a defenseman, right? I completely forgot about that. Because in my head, right, I've been, I love Brendan Gallagher. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a yeah. forward, right? So I was about to make that connection there. But yeah. then I'm like, okay, hold on. Got to relate it back to the defenseman. Um, and obviously speaking on that Montreal Canadiens point, uh, it's very exciting to see them back in an 82 game schedule. Like for me, I think about one to two months into the you know last season, I was kind of bored of the Canadian division. I'm not sure if you share the same feelings, but it kind of got boring for me. I wanted to see you know the Buffalo, the Detroit, the Boston, Tampa yeah. Bay, right? Absolutely, I was in the same boat as you too. It did get dry pretty quick, but made for an exciting last couple of weeks of hockey. That's for sure. Oh, 100%. Do you have any favorite teams of other sports? I'm a big Jays fan. Really big baseball fan. Yeah, they're on a nice little hot run here. You know, they just uh, lost on, uh, last night, unfortunately. And, you know, the story of that series seems to be the umpires and, like, how brutal they've been. And, and it, like, I'm not one to ever blame the umpires. Like, their strike zone is so, like, tight, right? Like, they do it forever. They're the best of the best. But it was just, like, evident that, like, I, I don't know the guy's name that was umping, but it was awful. Like, just, yeah. there was a couple that were just ball four that was absolutely a strike or strike three that was just obviously a ball and they just missed it but it happens it's adversity it would be something incredible to see the jays uh make the playoffs let alone host a playoff game uh you know with all that they've been through you know going from florida to buffalo now back to toronto they've had three different home openers yeah, I, absolutely it's crazy i don't like the stress they were under moving all around especially with families i couldn't imagine like to be where they are right now it's pretty incredible 
you played the majority, you know, getting to your story here, you know, you played the majority of your career in the CCHL with the Brockville, ba- or Brockville Brave, sorry. Uh, how did that team help you develop into the player you are today? Um, honestly, it might be cliche to say, but my coach is, um, from when I was an affiliate at 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, when I was playing there, I had five new coaches, and they all brought so many different perspectives, and they've been everywhere. They've coached everywhere, and they've seen a lot of young talent, a lot of older guys, guys that have been in the NHL and pro, and like, for them to bring it all back to Brockville, um, and just for me to get different perspectives from so many different people, it was... It's, it was incredible. Our teams are always very tight. It's a good spot to be. Brothel's beautiful. Oh, okay, we sorry about that. Uh, you know, you played your first season with the Braves back in 2013-14, which you came over from the Morseburg Lions, right? Uh, you know, could you describe those what those first games were like for you? Oh man, uh, actually a really funny story. I was uh, I've never even been in a coach bus before at this point. So my very first junior A game, I get called up from Morseburg. Uh, we're on our road to Ottawa to play the Junior Sands, and like I had to pee bad, man. <laughs> <laughs> real bad. And uh, I was about to like text the coach at the front of the bus, be like, "Hey, Moral, like I, I got to pee. Like, can you pull it? Like, I got to go to the bathroom, like really bad." All of a sudden, we hit a bump, and like he heard the toilet seat like s- slap down. And I turned around, looked at one of the boys, like, "Man, is there a bathroom back there?" <laughs> they looked at me like so wrong, They're like, uh, "Yeah, there's a bathroom back there." I hopped up and ran back so quick, but. Uh, yeah, the transaction from Junior B to Junior A was like exponentially bigger. Like, they're just so much bigger, faster, stronger. And I came from a weaker Junior B team and playing on a good Brockville team. And it just like, I hate to, you know, I may say this the wrong way, but like playing with better players makes you such a better player. Oh, 100%. Like, people being in the right places, it just like the transaction was a little bit more smooth than I would have thought it was, even though I wasn't an integral part of that team. But. They welcomed me, and it was from that game on. It was brought for me. Well, see, that's the lifestyle of the rookie. Never knowing that there's a you know a toilet on the coach bus. Yeah, that, that's unreal. Uh, but yeah, to your point there, uh, I think that when you do play with best, you know, the better players, it brings out the skills on a more like I guess better perspective than it is if you're playing with players that are worse than you, right? Because yeah. if you're playing with players that are worse than you, you're more likely your mistakes are more likely to show up, right? Absolutely. And I think people are more likely to forgive you if you're playing with the better players because they're like, okay, maybe uh, you know this line doesn't work out, but we're trying with this guy, right? Exactly. Exactly. You can switch stuff up. And- and you play with better players, even if you make a terrible pass, like they're gonna pick it up, and you're like, "Oh, thank God!" I don't yeah, exactly. Like uh, in your second season with the Braves, you scored your first goal, uh, as well as appeared in 49 games. What was your welcome to the league moment? And when I, what I mean by that is, like, you know, Zach Wilson, he just comes off a four interception game against New England, right? That could be, you know, described as his welcome to the NFL moment. So, another really good story. My first goal there. Um, the very next shift after I hit a guy from behind, just brutal hit. Nice. <laughs> ten, 10 game suspension up in my oh, first wow. goal. Yeah. Just Gone. an absolute spenny right there. Yeah, I, that is unreal. <laughs> so not only do you, I guess it's a good moment that you finally, it's a monkey off the back, yeah, right? Because right. in the previous season, you know, you didn't, you, you probably had some struggles there getting adjusted, right? Which is Absolutely. fine. But then you now you score your first goal and then you get a, a handed a 10 game spenny. That's unreal. It was, it was different, that was for sure. I felt so bad. Poor guy was taken off on a stretcher and thank God he was okay. Yeah, exactly. For scary reasons, but still just not what you want to see, especially in my first uh, little stint there. You also appeared in five playoff games that season. How do you use the energy, you know, I guess overall throughout your career to, uh, you know, from the fans to your game? Yeah, um, in Brockville, our fans were phenomenal. Like uh, We played Pembroke in that series. We won the game one. We were the, I think, seventh seed, and they were the second seed. And we stole game one from them, and like Pembroke was devastated. They came back into our barn. They won two in a row, and then two more back at their barn. But the, the fans in playoffs, like both Pembroke and Brockville, it's just like they're there well before warm-up. Like They're seeing you off ice. So like it's just, it gives you chills to like think about it. Even though it's just like Tier 2 Junior A, like the fans are like they they're what makes junior A teams like they make the team Felix Chamberlain was a notable player that season. He scored 99 points, and now you guys are going into a playoff series against Pembroke. He's he was on Pembroke. Uh, how important was it for you guys to at least try and shut him down? Yeah, they had uh, they had a couple guys really notable. I think they had Nelson. They also had uh, Blobin that played Russ. Oh, yeah, really? Uh, Carlton. Yeah. So they they were like a powerhouse, and they were good. They ended up going to the finals, but. Uh, we also had like strong leaders on our team. Our captain that year was Sean King, and like 
he calmed us down. We had Andrew Pesky on the back end, who was only 17 at the time, but obviously went to North Dakota and he's in the American League. But, mm-hmm. um, so our top four defensemen were obviously pinned to Chamberlain, Nellis, Blavin the whole whole entire series. So maybe that's why I only got about six minutes of ice time. But um, it, it was for it was a learning curve for me to see uh, the, these guys like Pesky, Israel, the guys on the decor that just learn how to shut down these big, strong, fast players. And uh, yeah, I just I honestly sat back, learned from them. Whenever I was allowed out on the ice, I went out and did my thing, and we. Uh, Put up a good series. It was 4-1, but it was a really good series. It was tight. There was also a uh, meeting at Center Ice during the warm-up. Oh, wow. The whole, whole team at Center Ice is pretty pretty fun. So kind of like how, uh, like in MLB, you know, the dugout's kind of, oh, wow, that's unreal. Yeah, it was. It was pretty fun. So would you say that there's a tight rivalry between Brockville and Pembroke? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, big time. Always. There always will be and there always should be, I hope. You must be looking forward, or I guess, you know, speaking in the past, you must always have been looking forward to playing Pembroke. Absolutely. Yeah, we mark it on our schedule for sure. Then Cornwall, already done the 401. Those were our two biggest rivals when I was playing. And it was always, a, honestly, a bloodbath growing up with them. <laughs> In your third season, this is when you finally broke out into the CCHO, scoring 43 points in 55 games. How sweet was it to finally get on the board and get into a groove? Man, I, like, I've always been a guy, like, I know it's cliche, like, focus on defense. I've always done that. And, like, from game one in that season, like, I just, I felt like I was just dishing to Neil Robinson, dishing to Liam Folk. This is somebody, like, and they would just score. So, like, I just did, like, little things, dish the puck, move the puck when I had to, and they just put, like, they just put the puck in the net, and like I ended up on the score sheet. And I don't think it had much to do with me, but it, it felt nice. It was a monkey out the back. You, you get some recognition around the league. It's it's people are it's nice. It's it, a good it, it almost makes it feel like you're you know kind of known as some threat, some offensive threat, right? Absolutely. And it's finally, and, and you finally get to know that because you mentioned that how you, like you like you've been a defense first type of guy, right? And now you're like, okay, well, let me try this offensive skill that I have, and maybe within that coach's system, it's kind of unleashed, right? That's, that's literally everything. It's you get a chance within a new system, new coach, which was the case, and I ended up you know, just clicking with that power play or with those top lines that could just put the puck in the net, and then we just rolled as a team from there on. Speaking on that power play point, how important was it to earn that coach's trust to get on the power play? Uh, rumor had it I was supposed to be cut that year. Oh wow! So I ended up making my way onto the team from a former coach who had his input on me as a character kid um, and they took me and I ended up just getting a chance and like I said just like that power play clicked we had Neil Robinson who's in the East Coast League, Jack Billings in the East Coast League, Liam Folks is in the American League, um, Vinny Renda just signed pro overseas like it was just like an incredible talented team and we just we rolled that year it was fun it was a lot of fun. Getting into the playoffs again, because you guys made it that year, you swept Cumberland in the playoffs, and even during game one of that series, you guys went to double overtime. What's it like playing in that situation? Oh, I just got chills thinking about that game. Um, that, it was incredible. Every stride you took, you're just skating straight up. You're like Every muscle in your body is just tense straight up. You're cramping, but uh, I remember the goal clearly. It was Liam Folks that put it in for us in a double overtime, and that was a sigh of relief. And then we just, from there on again, we took three straight from – uh, Cumberland, even though we probably shouldn't have, we did, and that's just the way it is. And it was, it was that was a fun, uh, fun series. You scored your first playoff goal during that series. How did that exactly happen? Um, that was that was actually in the second series against. Oh, okay, my bad. Was, uh, no, that's that's all good. Um, I don't know if I even got on the score sheet in the first in the first uh, series, but that second series, my. My goal was just a point shot on Colton Point, actually, who played for the World Junior Team. So, oh, yeah. So that was pretty normal for me. I like that. <laughs> With that great success you had in your, uh, I guess that would be your third season, you were awarded captaincy. You know, what's it like to be, uh, you know, among being recognized within the leadership group? Yeah, it, unbelievable. It's it's such a cool feeling just to, to know that people, like, have respect for you or that you have earned people's respect. Um and then it was a new coach again that year. Colin Burkus came in, and like for him to just appoint me captain right away, with literally not knowing who I am, just based on word, it just kind of like it goes a long way. You know? mm-hmm. Like he, it's it's a tight knit team. Like for the players and coaches to think of you that way, it's an incredible feeling. And you know that's something that is really good that you point on because you know it's very it's very good to leave that last long lasting impression on different coaches, right? Because you never know if they're going to spread the word from one coach to another. Absolutely, yeah, and they they do they they all talk and they're all one big family. And as you get older, it's more cutthroat. So the the 
the leg, not legacy, but whatever you leave on that team, like that impression, it goes, it goes further than kids would think. So you always got to keep that in mind. Was there an added layer of pressure that came with being a captain? In Brockville, taking over from Jack Billings, yeah, because Jack Billings was one of the best leaders I've ever had. And like, I just tried to mimic whatever he did. The things that he said, the things that I learned from him are literally how I try to lead today. Like, and there was added pressure, but uh, after training camp, stuff like that, like things were established, this is the way it is. And it just, it was easier. It was a good transition from there. In your final year with Brockville, you scored 37 points in 50 games. You set a career high in goals with 12. What does it mean to achieve that accomplishment? Um, the, again, the points just came from having a good team again. Uh, that, that team was incredible. My 20-year-old year, we had a couple 16-year-olds come in, play massive roles. We had a kid, uh, we were supposed to be dead last that year. Oh, wow. And we had a kid, uh, Simon Kerr, who, play, Kerr, who plays with us here at Carleton now. He was cut from a junior A team in Kingston. We picked him up, he ended up being a top three defenseman for us. We just, we went to game seven against OJS, we ended up winning it all. It was just a, like, honestly, not the Cinderella story in the end, but to go through all that with all those guys, it was, that was my most memorable junior hockey moment by far, it was just that playoff run with that team. Well, you guys also had a nice wins, a road win streak with six games. You know, how does it feel to go into the visitor's barn and come up with a win? Yeah, absolutely. It's, Taking that momentum away from a home team and a good team in OJS, like that's that's all you can ask for. On the road, if you can even go four and two in six games on the road, like that's that's winning, right? You're you're doing well. That's what you want. But to go in on that streak, it's it's intimidating for the other team too. Like it's in the back of their head. So exactly, you just want to get into the heads of the other team. Exactly. Yeah, big time. In your first year with the Carlton Ravens, you had 10 points in 26 games, but how would you describe the adjustment you had to make from coming, you know, as a junior A player to the university level? I didn't think I was going to get a sniff on the ice my first year. Um, even after my first preseason game, the coaches literally just asked me one-on-one, -on -one, how do you think he played? And I was just like, oh man, like that was awful. Like, I'm so sorry that this is what you got out of me. And they're like, oh, I thought you were in a good position. I thought you were this and that. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I'll do that again. And uh, no, um, really strong team. Again, we Carlton always has like it's an unbelievable hockey program. We always have strong teams, but that team, my first year, very tight. Like big goal scorers. We had big goals our first year. We ended up uh, making it to nationals, obviously, and it was just an incredible experience from Carlton that year. What was that experience like? Uh, you know, going to nationals. Unreal. We uh, we got there a little bit early so we could enjoy like the scenery around Lethbridge. Um, beautiful rink that we were in there it's run so professionally like you get there you have your little uh, your pass on yeah. walking in through the door people are like taking pictures oh yeah it's, it's it's a different experience it's pretty cool it's it's different you know in the playoffs it is a best of three series how does that change the dynamic of when you try to game plan against other teams oh it's nuts it's bounces that's what like you got to come focused from warm up to the end of the game it's one bounce can literally boot you out of the playoffs and who knows, maybe bounces went our way, but um, teams that work hard, they get those quick breaks. It's just the other way and gone. And if you you got to generate your own lucky bounces. Absolutely. That's, hard work does that for you. You did actually play in a do-or-die game three against McGill, that playoff run. How do you shake off the nerves that come with that? Uh, well, we, we went up 2 nothing, and we were like, oh, we got this in the bag, of course. Um, Anyways, McGill comes back out in the third, scores two quick on us, oh, wow. end up going to uh, going to overtime, and uh, Jared Stay, uh, beautiful shot from the slot, just sent us uh, to Nationals, ended up clinching a playoff berth, and off we went. That's a that's actually pretty wild that you guys would take them nonchalantly because like everyone knows that the two goal lead is the worst lead in hockey. Absolutely. And you have, you have perfect experience of that. Exactly. It was just phenomenal. Was, the butterflies were there. It was, it, was real. it was real. You know, it seemed like things were working for you guys in the first two rounds of the playoffs. What did Queens do in that third round to cause disruption to the system? Man, I'm going to just stick with my gut here. We were 80 times better than that team was. And they just collapsed. Their goalie was on fire. They collapsed, took away the house. And we, we had a hard time penetrating that middle of the ice to get in close areas. But... Their goalie stood on their head. Made timely saves, I'm assuming. Oh, it was both games. First game was like 52 to 20 shots for us. The second game was 40 to 25 for us. Like, but that that stat doesn't matter if you lose, right? Yeah, exactly. But no, they, they played as a tight team. And they figured it out. They ended up winning the OUA. So what can I say?
you know, that's hockey for you. It, it goes back to your bounces point. Yeah, exactly. They got the better bounces than you guys. They did. We were a much better team. I don't care what anybody says. I even have buddies on that team. They're just, they, we were 10 times better than they were. In your second year as a Raven, you know, the points obviously weren't there, eight points in 28 games, but how do you use that, I guess, as adversity and come back this season as a better player? Um, I felt, honestly, like I had a much better year my second year. Whether the points didn't come, I've never been on a power play here. I've never, like, really wanted to just because of the guys that we've had on our power play that obviously deserve it. So in this league, in a short season, I, it's a lot of penalties – um, I feel like that's how you get a lot of points in this league. Um, but just for me to stay solid, D zone, you know, through the neutral zone, if I can just pinch in the odd time offensively, that's, that's great for me. And if we can win, that's obviously the main goal, which we did a lot of. Yeah, well, I mean, you guys did dominate that regular season back in 2019-20, and you were, were, you were rewarded with the number one seed in the East. How did you make sure you guys can, you know, continue that momentum into the playoffs? Ah, uh, well... You know, we did against RMC. We continued that in. They're a hard-nosed team. Um, and then second round, we got just injury riddled. We, I think the second, no, the first game of the second series against Concordia, uh, three of our top six defensemen were out before, before overtime. Oh, wow. So we had to move a forward back. The next game, we had a couple of our other defensemen in that hadn't played in a little while, and kudos to them. They played unreal. Um, they hopped in in a tough spot and they held their own and another nail biter against Concordia that we ended up getting short end of the stick and there goes our home ice second round exit all for nothing and it's just literally heartbreaking it was a just terrible week for us you must have been grateful though that you did get your season finished Absolutely. whether you whether it was you know in a losing fashion or not because we all know that the coronavirus shut down everything everything yeah nationals got shut down uh, one game into it it's just I Heart breaks for those guys that got to go to nationals. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to get there. They got there, and to be sent home the way they did is just—it's too bad. It's really too bad. Speaking on, you know, this upcoming season now, what are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to this division of uh, us, McGill, Concordia, UPTR, and Ottawa. That's going to be like—it's going to be fast hockey. There's no doubt it's the most competitive league in Canada. Um, and our team, our returning guys, our leaders with our new rookies, even the second year guys that have never played, like they're good. They can they can move the puck, they can skate. Like we're gonna have a really solid team. Our coaches are uh, implementing a new system that we're just learning right now that nobody's ever seen, and I'm excited to try it out and see how it can help us out. November fourth is when you guys kick off your season. That's in Ottawa, or I sorry, at U Ottawa, I should say. Uh, being on the road, we mentioned that you have good, you know, experience with Brockville and going on the road and winning. How do you make sure you guys, how you bring that to Carlton and, you know, I guess teach some of the younger kids, right? This is what we got to do. Yeah, no, it's, it's starts like uh, Monday practice. Like if we know we're playing, say, say you Ottawa, you know, we're, our coach is going to break down what you Ottawa does. Uh, and we're going to try and attack them on their weaknesses on what they aren't very good at and. Just from that moment, we know we're going into their bar and we know they have home ice advantage. Uh, like, sure, they can line match, but our coaches do a real good job at like giving us information on their players, even little things like the way they can't, maybe a defenseman can't pivot one way very well. It's just, it's just little focuses that way that help like all new guys, the whole team from top down. What are some of your personal goals that you want to achieve? I want to win. It's, I've never won anything in my life, ever. Not one competitive game like not one league it'd just be incredible just to get a ring i just yeah i love that answer i love that answer so much because you know <clears throat> personally for me like i've played house league my whole life so i've never played a lick of rep hockey um and so i guess my only thing that i've won was when i was helping out with the with my high school hockey team we won our you know our tier one championship and that was the first time in in uh, high school history that we've done that and our school's like our school is only seven eight years old yeah. So, but I mean, like, that's literally the only thing that I won, and I wasn't even a part of the team on an on-ice role. I was the off-ice. Yeah, and that's, that's huge. Like, like our off-ice guys are huge to us. Like, our equipment manager, our therapist, like, they're, like, they help the team out more than anybody ever thinks. Like, people have no idea what they do for a team. As we're ending off the interview here, do you have any advice for aspiring hockey players? Yeah, yeah I do. I literally do not give up. If there's uh there's going to be adversity wherever you go. There's going to be maybe if you're playing a competitive game, there's going to be people that are trying to take your spot. You just got to like shut your mouth, work hard, bury your head, and results will come to you. And that's my advice that I was always told was be humble, 
whenever you're given an opportunity, take it, run with it, and uh, never look back. Well, I'd like to thank again uh, Andrew Jarvis for joining me on today's podcast. Thank you again, Andrew. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you having me out.